I'm Dan Johnson and I've flown this airplane before but we haven't uh, flown it recently and we thought we needed an update and now we can do a full video pilot report for it. So we hope you enjoy that. Let's talk about the basics of the airplane. First of all, 220, 240 that, that just describes the landing gear on them. The 220, as you see here, this is a tail dragger airplane and this has got some large tires on it. They can come in different configurations that way. But you can also have this airplane in a nose wheel configuration or tricycle gear configuration. That's the A240. That's the basic difference between the airplane. Here's an airplane that comes out of uh, the European uh, uh, area and is imported by Rob Rollison, the man behind the name Aerotrek. And we'll give you his website address later so you can go get a lot more information. But this is an airplane that's been going for a long time now and has been uh, well evolved over that time. And Rob is a guy I've known for many years and he's gone uh, dealt, done business with many different airplane products over the years, liked many of them, but end, eventually settled on this one. And the reason why I mention those things is to say that here's a man who's quite careful about the products that he represents, and he's decided that this is the one that he really wants to get behind. He's done very well with it. He's moved up in the uh, aircraft sales rankings. I believe he's in the ninth or tenth spot now. There's about a hundred of these flying in the U.S., so it's had quite a good successful run. It's an all uh, welded steel fuselage inside, underneath, and the wings are dope and fabric covered, but obviously with a good bit of uh, fiberglass construction and the cowling or wheel pants for those that have wheel pants on them. This one does not because it's a little more of a bush-oriented airplane with these big wheels on it. And indeed, we're going to find out that it lands quite nicely on those big tires. Uh, the airplane is, uh, uses the 912 uh, ULS, that's the carbureted version, this particular one here that we're going to go fly anyway and uses a three-blade wood comp prop on it. It produces 100 horsepower, and that really gives it some great performance. Uh, as you see, I'm going to lower the doors here just so you can see that these doors are all clear, and the, the result of that is with also a skylight up front, quartering windows in the back behind the doors, and then what's called a turtle deck uh, behind the uh, seats in the airplane. That's all, all, uh, fiberglass, uh, all plastic. And you can see out of this airplane, almost like it's a helicopter, it has really great visibility. But the thing that really caught me was out of these doors, you can't see it from the outside very well, but they bow out. And that means that you can look almost straight, well, you can look straight down out of the seats in either seat um, and, uh, and, and have wonderful downward visibility. So that's really a nice feature to this airplane. It also allowed something that I hadn't realized how valuable this might be. But you can see the main gear, whichever side you're on, you can see that wheel very easily. And while you're taking a landing, the, your peripheral vision will pick up where that is, and it actually helps quite a bit. I ended up having a really good landing in this airplane, as we'll find out later on. Um, the airplane also has a great price point on it, and we try and stay away from exact prices, so we'll give you a website address later on, and you can go there and you can check with them. But it's in the range of about eighty-five or $89,000, something like that. And for that, it's a very well-equipped airplane. And I want to tell you something that uh, the owner, uh, Ron uh, Wechter, uh, told me, uh, that he's a member of an EAA chapter and some of those folks in his EAA chapter have gone to Air Venture Oshkosh and have won some awards with some really well done airplanes and if you don't know how that works it, that really means something to win one of those awards because the judges come around and they are looking at the smallest details because there's a lot of really nice ones so to pick a winner they have to go down to some real small detail and find out. And he said some of those same fellas who would have won the top award at Air Venture looked over this particular airplane and couldn't find anything about it that they could fuss about that wasn't done quite right to their satisfaction. So that's really saying something. Um, the inside of the airplane, we'll call that the human factors part of it. The seats I found quite comfortable, uh, and I'm picky about seats, so that's saying something too. Uh, the, the comfort factor and sitting in the seat was real good. However, they don't have a great deal of adjustment, so you're going to need to consider that when you first set the airplane up. You can make some changes, but the inside when you're moving it, uh, the adjustability is not that great. Uh, the joysticks are uh, dual joysticks, dual rudder pedals, dual toe brakes. Uh, those are all the kind of features that you would expect to find on a proper airplane, and indeed this one's got them. Uh, for ventilation in the aircraft, you can see it has these small rotating uh, 
uh, air vents. They're simple, but they work really well, and they bring in a lot of air, or you can turn them around. Yesterday when we were flying, it got kind of cool up at altitude. Then you just turn them around and face them the other way. It's very simple. They're light, and that's a feature of this airplane on whole, without giving you the exact numbers of uh, useful load and payload and things like that. This is a light, lightly built aircraft, and that makes it perform really well with a 100 horsepower system on it. Layout of the panel inside, uh, as we'll see from some views later on, uh, uh, the, the location of instrumentation is good. Uh, Ron and his particular airplane uses analog instruments primarily, but then has an iPad mount in the center where he uses the iPad mini uh, that gives him all the uh, GPS information and could have other information on it if he liked. Switches are all lo logically located right underneath the instrument panel. Right? Everything is very accessible. And between the two occupants are a couple of other important controls. One of them is a flap lever, one of them is a trim lever. They're right alongside one another, but the flap lever is, is quite a bit longer, and just by reaching down and touching it with your hand, you don't even have to look, you can tell which one you've got. And then either occupant can reach both the trim and the flap very easily. So a couple of things about the uh, aircraft that we didn't mention so far is, for one, this is an important one too, because for a lot of people this is a uh, purchase decision uh, main reason that they'll use, and that's the folding wings on this airplane. Now, you might say that this airplane looks somewhat like some other designs, and indeed it does, although it's been changed significantly over the many years they've been making this uh, at AeroPro. That's the European name. Here in the United States they use the name AeroTrek. That's a uh, some copyright issues and that's why they have to use Aerotrek here. But the airplane does look similar to some other ones you've seen and it does feature folding wings and that process can happen by a single individual. The wings fold back in the same position they're in here so they don't have to rotate or anything like that. That means an individual can do it and the whole process takes, I'm told, about five or ten minutes at the very most uh, with minimal connections to make it all work right. So. Uh, brakes on the airplane were quite strong. As I said, it's tow brakes, so you've got individual uh, braking, and uh, that helps with ramp maneuvering. The brakes are they use uh, the Behringer brand, master cylinders, and then the uh, company has its own brakes that it uses, but it, it employs the Behringer uh, basic hardware. And it has a breakaway tail wheel, and, and that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. That means that the tail wheel can swivel all the way. Once it gets past a certain point, it'll say break away and allow it to pivot around. You can pivot on a single main gear by holding down that brake and uh, using full rudder control. And you can turn the airplane around virtually inside a wingspan. So those are some real strong features for the Aerotrek. Uh, it's been represented here by uh, Rob Rollison in the center of the United States in uh, Indianapolis uh, or Indiana um, for many, many years, and he's got it down very well. Everybody speaks well of their dealings with Rob. You can find out a lot more about this airplane and get those current prices and find out all the features that you want to know at aerotrek.aero, and you can find out more about this airplane and lots of affordable aviation at bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at the Midwest LSA Expo.